Hi, second graders. Hope you are all doing well. I miss you all. I hope that you're staying safe and you're happy at home doing um, your remote learning. Um, so I told you guys last time that we are going to be working on Peter and the Wolf for this month. And so we actually have two lessons left this week and next week. And it's all about Peter and the Wolf, which hopefully you read along with me last time. If you didn't, if you missed it, that's okay. We're going to actually be going over it today in this time. We're going to be doing it with something really, really special. We're going to be doing it with something um, called a listening map. And hopefully you remember that from the first grade, where a listening map basically kind of trains our ears to kind of follow the music, how we can kind of um, know where we are in the song, what we should be listening for. Um, it's kind of a cool just activity that we can do just to help us guide our way through the song. So the first thing you guys need to do today in order to do this activity is to print out the listening map. It is on my website. Um, it's only pages three and four. So if you're doing, it's a whole PDF file. Um, it's maybe about five or six pages. You don't need to print them all up. Just pages three and four, and they're gonna kind of look like this. Okay, or as you can see on the screen, that's what they look like. Um, so if you need to pause this video to get that, um, if you want to do it afterwards, it's not kind of the same thing. This activity really goes along with me telling you guys the story today. So once you do print it out, a couple of things. Um, I like to kind of cut it a bit on the bottom because it's not going to take up the whole page. If it did, I'd be surprised. But if it did, cool. Great. You don't have to do very much. But I'm going to actually cut mine so I have just a little bit shorter. And then um, you're going to look at the boxes and they all have little numbers at the top, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it almost looks like a game board, right? Ah, it does. It does look like a game board. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing. It's almost like we're playing a little game, a little follow, uh, follow the, the story game. So once I get to my 15 over here, 16 continues on the next part. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a little bit of scotch tape or you don't have scotch tape, maybe a stapler. Uh, you don't have to do this again. I like it because, well, that's how we would have done it in class. Or actually, I would have had this printed on a whole thing. So I'm going to tape it up for me right now so I can kind of show you how my game board is going to look at the very, very end. And ta-da! So now I have made my whole listening map and it has 32 parts in it. And don't be overwhelmed by that. Um, I love the story. Like I said, we did the story already last week. If you didn't, that's okay. We are doing it, but it is kind of cool to do it with the activity. I am very sorry that this was not in your instrument music book. Um, if you don't have a printer, um, I guess you can you can try to draw along. You can try to almost like check off like, OK, part one, part two is done. However, you want to be creative with it. It's really OK, but it is a lot of fun with this. So we're going to go on now. All right. So we know that we're reading the story of Peter and the Wolf. Oh, one more thing you are going to need before we begin some crayons. Okay. So again, you could pause me right here and you can go and get yourself some crayons. I picked the color of the rainbow crayons. I think I'm missing orange though. And I'll be honest with you, my dog just kind of ate it. So it wasn't really good. She kind of ran away with my orange crayon and I found it all crumbled up in my bed. So I have all the rainbow crayons except for orange. You can color it any way you want to though. If you want to do it just one color, if you want to do it alternating like blue, red, blue, red, or if you want to color in the detail, Hey, I want to color in Peter with a brown shirt and blue pants every time you can. That's a little challenging, but again, this is your listening map. Do whatever you want to. The most important thing is that you just kind of follow along with the story. And I'll be talking to you a little bit through this story this week, where last week I just had you listen to it. Today I'm going to be kind of talking to you through making sure that you guys understand what's going on. Peter and the Wolf is a musical fairy tale in which each character is played by a different instrument of the orchestra. Peter by the violins and all the strings of the orchestra. The bird by the flute.
the duck by the elbow. The cat by the clarinet. The grandfather by the bassoon. The wolf by the French horns. The hunters and their gunshots by the kettle drums and the big bass drum. Early one morning, while his grandfather was still dreaming of an angel and a bear and a runaway bull, Peter tiptoed from their cottage out into the garden and passed the fat duck who blinked sleepily at him. Peter quietly opened the gate and skipped out onto the wide green meadow. So I'm going to color number one over here because as I can see, Peter is kind of our main character in our story. There we go, he's kind of skipping off. And again, I just colored the whole thing. A little bird was perched on a branch of a big tree near the garden wall. He was Peter's friend. Good morning, Peter, chirped the bird gaily. What a fine day. That's number two on my listening map. The bird that is played by the flutes. Kind of sounds like a whistle, right? Well, that's the reason why they have. And you'll also see that there is a tuba kind of next to it. It just basically means that the rest of the instruments in the orchestra are kind of joining along while they're doing it. Again, we're still just on number two. And we're listening to the music. That's Peter's theme music, right? You could hear the flutes, which is the bird, and Peter, which is represented by the violins. I'm trying to show you. When the duck saw that Peter had not closed the gate, she roused herself and began waddling out of the garden and into the meadow. Yep, there's number How three. How nice to start the day with a swim in my very own pond, she thought. That's number three, the duck played by the oboe. The little bird and the duck were friends, but sometimes they liked to tease each other. Today the bird flew down onto the grass and said to the duck, what kind of bird are you if you can't fly? It's gonna be number four. The duck quacked back, what kind of bird are you if you can't swim? and she splashed noisily into the pond. And that's number five. So the bird and the duck are kind of having this argument, right? And the bird's kind of like, na 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 na, you can't fly. And the duck is like, whatever man, you can't swim. So they're just kind of teasing each other. They're going back and forth, back and forth. That's numbers four and five. Thank you. 
The two argued back and forth, the duck splashing and swimming in the pond, the bird fluttering and hopping along the pond's edge. You can't fly, twittered the bird. You can't swim, quacked the duck. Suddenly, Peter, who was watching the duck and the bird argue, saw his cat sneaking through the tall grass. Mm, I think we know what number that is. It's number six, where the cat has just been introduced to our story, played by the sneaky clarinet. Oh, how I love little birds, thought the cat. And this one is so busy arguing, I'll just grab him and start my day with a lovely breakfast. Now, little sneak peek, if we kind of look at number seven, you're going to see the words loud and then soft. That's very important for what's coming up next. Listen. Hear it? That's it, loud and Look soft. out, shouted Peter. The bird instantly flew off to the big tree now by call the me number wall, seven. while the duck quacked angrily at the cat from the middle of the pond. If you kind of take a look at number eight, eight is kind of blank, like not much is going on. That's because the bird has flown really high. Can't find my other crayon. There it is. So I'm gonna color kind of eight, and I'm also gonna kind of color nine and ten now, because we're gonna get up to the point where the three of them, the duck, the cat, and the bird, all have their instruments being played. So I'm gonna color up to ten right now. Meanwhile, meanwhile. Peter's grandfather was up and about and wondering where Peter was. He came stomping through the garden gate and out to the meadow. How many times must I tell you not to go into the meadow alone? He scolded and always close the gate. What would you do if a wolf came out of the forest? We're now on number 11 where the grandpa, played by the grumpy bassoon, is like, Peter, get inside! You're the wolf, you're the wolf, the wolf! I don't want a young boy like you out there to play. So we're coloring number 11 as well. Peter said, I'm not afraid of a wolf. And we're in number 12, where Pete's kind of like, I'm not scared of anything. And look at how his expression changes. He's kind of concerned that he's like, no way, I got this. So this is number 12. Silly boy. Silly boy. Oh, a wolf is dangerous, said Grandfather, as he led Peter back to the garden, locked the gate, locked the gate and, went his and went into his cottage. The meadow. Hungry a big, hungry wolf the crept through the tall grass. Cat was the first to spot it. In 
the cat was the first to strike. In a flash, she ran to the tree by the garden wall and shot up it, climbing higher and higher until she could go no farther. You can see how on number 15, the cat is darting up the tree, right? It knows. The duck did not see the wolf. The duck still did not see the wolf. Go down to she was only concerned for her friend. Look out for the cat, little bird, quacked the duck as she splashed out of the pond and followed the cat to the big tree. The poor duck did not see the wolf until it was too late. Then she waddled off as fast as she could and flapped her wings madly trying to fly. But the wolf ran fast and faster. He came closer and closer and was almost upon her when he pounced. Poor duck, right? And the 17, you heard the music faster. And with one big gulp, he swallowed the duck whole. The wolf licked his he lips and trotted over to the tree. Him, staring up he at the paced cat. around and around it, staring up at the cat. Now he's after you, trilled the little bird to the number cat. 18. Now he's after the you, trilled the little bird to the, the cat. Bird the cat looked up at the bird and hissed, after me. I'm gonna And get I'm you. after you. But you'll never catch me, the bird said back. Come down and play with me, said the wolf to the cat, pretending to be friendly. I won't hurt you. Peter was watching all that was going That's on number 20. behind the safety. Peter was of the watching gate. all that was going on from behind the, the safety of the closed gate. The I'm not when afraid of the wolf, he said, and ran into the cottage. The Quickly, he returned with a strong rope and climbed the garden, the garden wall near one of the big branches of the tree. He grabbed the branch, swung himself into the tree, and whispered to the bird, The big fly down and circle around the wolf's head. But be careful, don't get too close. As you can also see, kind of number 22, it's kind of lowering, lowering. Oh, and if number 20, if your Peter doesn't have eyes, don't, that's okay. You could just draw them in. So we're up to number 22 right now. The little bird swooped down near the wolf, and as the wolf threw his head back and snapped his jaws open, the little bird darted off. So 23 as the bird is circling the wolf's head. How dare you tease me? How dare you tease me? Snarled the wolf, and he snapped angrily at the bird from this side and that. The bird would brush the wolf's nose with his wings, and just as the wolf thought he had caught the bird, off went the bird chirping shrilly. Again and again, the little bird fooled the wolf. Up in the tree. This is 24. The rope to the big Up in the tree, and making a noose Peter wasted no end. time tying the rope to the big branch the and making a noose to the other end. He waited bird. until the wolf was the all tired out moment, from jumping Peter at the bird. The over the wolf's tail when the wolf stood still for a moment, Peter the lowered the noose over the wolf's the tail wolf. and pulled with all his might on the rope. He caught the wolf. The wolf pulled and tugged and tugged and pulled on the rope. But Peter had tied the rope securely to the big branch, and the wolf could not get free. Finally, the beast fell down in a heap, exhausted and defeated. Try the heavy sound. 
sound and it goes back to light. And he tries again. He tries to pull it on out. So that's number 25. Please let me go. And 26. How this works. He's bargaining now. And he says, I'll never, never come, come back. Here I again. promise. Just let me go. That's number 26. Just then, two hunters came crashing out of the forest. Seven. About nervously. Just then, two hunters came crashing out of the forest looking about nervously. Number 27, the hunter is right. Peter and the Wolf Remember is a Russian fairy tale, and this theme right here is a very, very Rush, a traditional Russian sounding tune that you might find in, in uh, classical Russian music. And when they saw it, they began shooting wildly into the air. They were afraid of the wolf. So they're not and when they smart. saw it, they began shooting wildly into the air. shouted Peter. We have already relief. caught the wolf. When they heard that the wolf had promised the hunters never to breathed come back, a sigh of relief. When they heard that the wolf had promised never to come so back, they offered to help Peter to lead rope. him back to his home. So now, long as he was safely has tied kind of like boots rope. and ballet slippers, which is interesting, because sometimes me, Peter and the wolf is performed as a ballet. And this music's very gentle. Follow me, chirp the bird. In such a ballet. And Peter says, follow me. So this music is very, very classical, almost like they would be dancing to it. Now we get to the big parade. Then all the wolves set off for the forest. Then all First of them Peter, set off for the forest. Peter leads the parade. First came Peter. With his violin theme. Try to hum it if you can. the cowardly hunters with the big tired wolf on a rope. After him marched the cowardly hunters with the big tired and the wolf rest on a rope. Of the parade is really number 30. So if you want to color it now you can. If you want to color the characters in order as they progress, that's up to you. But we are on number 30 now, which is the parade and the procession of the leading the wolf out of there. Up the mysterious French horn. Our wolf theme. Have you ever seen a boy as brave as Peter? He called to the hunters. 
And so clever. Here's that sneaky clarinet playing the cat Back to Peters. And last came the cat, thinking over their heads. That's right. Number thirty-one. That bird. Over their heads fluttered the little bird, chirping happily. Peter and I caught the wolf. We are now up to our last box. And the duck, the duck was making such a quacking and thrashing about in the wolf's and the stomach. Duck, the, the duck was making such a quacking and thrashing about in the wolf's stomach that the wolf felt guilty and finally called her out. Whereupon she joined the procession, quacking and triumphant. Nice job, boys and girls. Thank you so much for wondering why the duck is not part of number 32. The only thing I can think of is that whoever created the sheet, which I love and I've used for a long time because I just love uh, the listening map, is that they probably didn't want to give away the end of the story for those listening to it the first time. So that's why they really have the wolf. But if you feel like adding an extra box in there and making it number 33 and you want to add in the duck, I would highly suggest that. If we were in classroom, that's exactly what I'd have you do. I'd have you add in one last little number 33 box, and that, of course, is our duck. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today as we did our second telling of Peter and the Wolf. Hopefully you guys kind of learned a lot about it. And again, one of the reasons I love this story is because it has to do with instruments, but not really in the story. It's just like they have their own theme music, right? So again, um, take those listening maps that you just made for me, uh, snap a shot of it and send it to me at abroski at schools.nyc.gov. This is the way that I check you off each week to make sure that you are participating in some way in music. And I just like to hear from you and see uh, what you guys have been doing. So have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time. Bye.